the girl with the scorpion tattoo. Has been an enduring mystery on Staten Island for 30 years. It's probably the most notorious cold case that we've had here in at least the last half century. My name is Eddie Dana. I'm the breaking news manager at the advanced SILive.com. Uh, I've worked here for about 20 years and uh, you know, in my capacity, I, I, I cover breaking news and criminal courts. And you know, in this case, a cold case homicide. Uh, September 20th, 1991, an individual was walking along Seaview Avenue across from South Beach Psychiatric Center and came across the body of a woman. She was handcuffed. Uh, she had been bludgeoned to death with a hammer and she was set on fire with an accelerant. Beneath the body was a hammer, uh, a workman's hammer, and it had the name Lloyd L. inscribed on it. And beginning 1991, when the body was discovered, investigators basically canvassed auto body shops on Staten Island, you know, trying to turn up any connection with that Lloyd L. hammer, and that, that came up empty-handed. Uh, prosecutors do not believe that this murder was random. Based on you know, the fact that she was struck probably about 17 times with a hammer, that it's, it seems like a, a crime of rage, or, or I guess what you would call a crime of passion. At the time, this was a complete mystery. In an attempt to identify her, law enforcement released a sketch of a, a distinct scorpion tattoo on her right buttock. Maybe someone would recognize the tattoo, maybe the tattoo artist that put the work would recognize his handiwork. And the, the woman and the case became known as, as the girl with the scorpion tattoo. They had sent her fingerprints out, they released a sketch of what she looked like, and for decades, it remained an absolute mystery. There was nobody to identify this woman. Nobody nobody came forward. Nobody reported her missing in a way that, that set off a connection. This is generations now of law enforcement in those three decades that worked on this case. And, and to be honest with you, generations of journalists here that covered this case over the years, uh, there were, as you would expect, several bizarre theories as to what could have happened here. Uh, there was a theory that she was an immigrant from another country and her family had lost contact or had no idea of knowing where she was in the United States and, and hence that's why there was no identification. There was thought that she was the victim of a serial killer. Again, unfounded, but uh, that that was something that they looked at, thought maybe she worked for a circus, was a traveling circus performer and you know, again, and that was that, that was unfounded. No idea who would have killed her. And again, her killer still walks free. Uh, you know, right right now. On Tuesday, March 21st, for the first time in over 30 years, there was a significant development in the case. This case was followed with great sorrow and public intrigue across the borough and beyond. Despite the incredibly dedicated work of the NYPD at that time, Authorities were unable to identify her or locate the person who took her life so savagely and viciously at such a young age. Nearly 30 years later, in a joint effort with the FBI, my incredible team of detective investigators working with the NYPD detectives picked up the case. We were able to identify the victim as Miss Christine Belusco of Morris County, New Jersey. In, in, in 2019, District Attorney Mike McMahon, investigators in his office, FBI, NYPD, decided to begin the path of, of forensic genealogical research. And there have been advancements in that field, obviously, that we did not have in, in 1991. Christine Belusco was a, a longtime New Jersey resident. Prosecutors say several weeks before she was found murdered, she had been staying at a Mount Airy Lodge in Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania. According to a report by the New York Times, she was adopted and estranged. That could have contributed 
into the the fact that nobody came forward to identify the body or, or, or knew to, to be looking out for her. In June of 2021, Christine's brother was interviewed and was informed of his sister's death. During the interview, we were made aware that Christine had a daughter who was born on August 1st of 1989. The birth name of that child was Krista Nicole Belusco. Krista was born at Barnett Memorial Hospital in Patterson, New Jersey. We were able to create an age progression photo of Krista Nicole, who was currently 33 years of age. We are seeking the public's assistance to solve the homicide of Christine Belusco and determine the whereabouts of Krista Nicole. So in addition to the search for the killer, prosecutors and law enforcement officials are trying to locate the child, Krista Nicole, and they don't know if she has a different name now, who raised her after her mother's death, whatever became of her. And they, they would like to talk to Krista Nicole to let her know what happened to her mother and, and, and give her those answers, uh, you know, in, in her life and, and let them know that her mother's case wasn't forgotten. Um, another question that, that's still open is what Christine was doing on Staten Island when she was killed. And prosecutors did not discuss that. That part of the investigation is open and ongoing. In terms of this case and, and what comes next, you know, on, on one hand, the mystery is partially solved in the sense that now we know the girl with the scorpion tattoo is Christine Belusco, 29, from New Jersey. Prosecutors hope that somebody comes forward with some information on who she might have been around at that time, who might have had a motive to kill her like this, who she had been in contact with, and certainly the law enforcement's efforts to, to track down the her daughter now, who would be 33, 34, and, and let her know what, what happened to her mother. We got some answers in one of Staten Island's enduring cold case mysteries. We now have a name to the girl with the scorpion tattoo. What happened to her still very much remains a mystery.